Hi Bestie, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I should have made this video yesterday. Um, and I fully intended when I got up to watch the episode, you know, once I got all housey things and doggy things handled, to sit down and watch <coughs> the boys and then come straight away and, and do a little video for you. <sighs> that did not happen. Um, because uh, once I really started to investigate what's going on in the world today, I found out that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died. And that just threw me into a little tailspin. And I never really, honestly, I'm not out of it. I'm just not. So I didn't watch the boys until really late last night. It was like midnight or something when I finally sat down and just stopped trying to think about frankly Mitch McConnell frankly her dying has had Mitch McConnell in my head I know he's a cheating lying bastard and so that's already playing out and I'm just distressed about it so I didn't sit down and, and watch it until late and um here I am. Okay, so here I am. So honestly, it's really, uh, I'm, uh, you can tell I'm struggling. Uh, if you're still here, let's go ahead and talk about it. It was episode five. Um, if you recall from last week, Butcher and his girl, they're, uh, they're not so good. She is, as you know, the mother of Homelander's baby, and that child is like nine or 10, maybe 11 years old now. And um, Butcher, after her saying that I'm not leaving my son for you, which seriously, Butcher, still, I'm blown away by you even thinking that could be possible. Why? Anyway, I'm not get, going down that road uh, again. Um, <laughs> so he doesn't want to fight soups anymore. He doesn't want anything to do with anything anymore. He wants to go get his dog, which is at his aunt's house. And, um, which is done is so fun and cute. So he, um, he goes over to his aunt's house and he sees the dog. Um, and his friends find him there. Huey and Mother's Milk find him there. Um, Frenchie's not with him because he's looking for, her name will come to me. Um, Kamiko, Kamika, Kamiko. Kamiko. Let me know in the comment section. You tell me because you know you're going to let me have it for that. Um, I'm fine. I'm starting to get remember everyone's name. You know, it takes me a few episodes. Okay. Um, and anyway, so they find them at the aunt's house. And once they're there, uh, they realize that Black Noir has followed Butcher and everyone's in trouble. Also going on during the episode, Homelander is still losing his shit. And it is just delicious to watch. Um, you're terrified the whole time because he is a loose cannon. His greatest, he, and I know that, there, I haven't watched the interview, but I watched a, a, a video where the person who had made the video watched the interview where the guy, I don't have my phone, and so I don't remember the actor's name, where the guy who plays Homelander had said that Homelander's biggest weakness is his ego, and that's what I said a couple of episodes ago, because that's exactly it. He has not been raised with any sort of emotional stability, so he doesn't have any emotional stability. He knows he's the most powerful being in the world, but that is actually what makes him weak because he's got this fragile Pringle potato chip ego where the tiniest bump and it crumbles to nothing and that infuriates him and so he uses his powers to lash out and that is destroying his image. He actually, in the episode, he goes to stop a terrorist and in the process of just killing the terrorist, um, which is the biggest problem of the superheroes. It's the extra 
judicial killings, right? Um, <clears throat> and that there are no consequences for their actions. So he kills this terrorist, but in doing so, he kills a child. Well, like a teenager, but still, that's a child. And so the whole world is like, no, we want justice. This is not okay. And even senators are now calling for justice against Homelander. So there's this scene where he shows up and nobody's having it. He's trying to talk everyone down. First of all, it's not approved by Vought. They didn't say, go do this. There's no script for this. He's working off the books. And he, nobody's buying it. And everybody is chanting something. I forget what. And he has this moment where he lays a bunch of them out with his lasery eyes. But of course, it's a, it's a daydream that he's having. And I think during that daydream moment, he realizes that there really is a limit to what he's going to be able to get away with. So that infuriates him as well. Now there's another part going on where Maeve is being forced to come out by Homelander because he's mad that she's got a relationship with somebody else. And he is forcing it into their movie, The Dawn of the Seven. And it's very obvious that it's forced into there. The Maeve's girlfriend does not want anything to do with this, but Maeve is like, girl, Homelander is going to cause so much trouble in the world, in your world, if you do not play along with this. I just need you to work with me on this. Um, Liberty, a.k.a. Stormfront, is playing some sort of game, and I can't quite figure it out. I know it has something to do with Lamplighter, because you see him for a little bit in the episode, but, and they're in con contact with each other, which now, Starlight knows, Starlight. And they almost come to blows. Like, Starlight goes in to snoop in Stormfront's trailer. Stormfront confronts her and says, Hey, I know you leaked Compound V. And she goes, Yeah, I know your liberty. So they both got something on each other. They're about to fight. And then in walks Homelander. So that's kind of put the kibosh on for a minute. Because they're all doing the movies together. And, um... Also going on is that Kamiko has gone out into the world and started taking jobs as a, an assassin. And she's getting these jobs through Frenchie's girlfriend. And Frenchie doesn't know this at first, but he's trying to find her. And there's this scene where Kamiko, oh my God, you guys, it was so good. I certainly hope you've already watched the episode before you're watching this because... There's been nothing but spoilers here. But um, I should have said that at the beginning. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, so Kamiko walks into this restaurant. And the dudes start fucking with her. They're Russian dudes. And this one is standing up by her. And he's, you know, like trying to, to piss her off. He turns around and says, says something to his friends like she's stupid or, or something. And she grabs his head and literally ripped his face off. It was so graphic and so... Right? I mean, I don't know what else to say. It was like freaky as fuck, you guys. It really destroyed me. Um, and then she breaks the other guy's neck and kills the other guy. Um, and then shortly thereafter, when she goes to get her pay... Sorry, something was driving me crazy right there. When she goes to get her pay... Frenchie catches up with her, and they're at this church, I think it was, and he sees that it's his girlfriend who's paying her to kill people, and they have this little conversation where Frenchie just is like, I'm disgusted with the both of you, and he splits out. Okay, so um, back to Butcher and the boys. They're at Auntie's house with uh, Black Noir outside, and... Um, they go to hide in the basement where Butcher's aunt deals drugs out of. She calls it the taffy room, which I love. Um, and they're down there, and Black Noir comes in, and they've set some traps for him and stuff. Because first they called for, like, a gas leak so that the city showed up. 
looked for a gas leak in the neighborhood and that gave them some time to uh, booby trap the house. And so once everyone leaves, they hide in the basement and Black Noir sets off all the booby traps and we get, he gets, Butcher actually goes out to confront him. Black Noir has him by the neck and then he gets a call from the main dude at Vought, the guy that is um, from ba from Breaking Bad, and he um, I can't think of what his name is. His character is pretty new in the in the show. <coughs> Excuse me. So he he talks to Butcher, and him and Butcher come to an agreement, and Black Noir sets him down, and he leaves. So. And the agreement is because Butcher tells him straight up, I got pictures of the kid. And if anything happens to me, the kid that Homelander, you know, sired through rape, he goes, if anything happens to me, the whole world's going to know Homelander's a rapist. They already have in serious problems with Homelander's public image. They don't need this shit. So he makes the decision. Butcher's free to go and Black Noir leaves. So what I really loved the most about this episode is that it really gives you a glimpse into Butcher because there's this part where the auntie says um, to Huey, hey, you look like Lenny. And she goes, he looks like Lenny. And later Huey asks her who's Lenny and you find out that Butcher had a brother named Lenny who died and he was the calming force in Butcher's life. He was the one that could make him stop, that could make him reason and make sense and calm. So that clues Huey in to what his superpower is where Butcher is concerned. Because Butcher so far has just been this unstoppable force and Huey doesn't understand why he likes him. And now everything sort of clicks into place. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I know I've left some stuff out, but I did watch this show with a jumbled mind. And honestly, my mind is still jumbled. Having said that, though, I'm going to go watch a scary movie in a couple hours. I'll come back and tell you about that. And I'm going to do some reading later tonight about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Sorry, I stumbled her name. Um, and I do want to do like a tribute video to her so look forward to that as well coming up soon not today maybe not tomorrow but in the next few days so thank you guys so much for watching this channel hit all my buttons and share this if you liked it and we will talk to you soon Mwah. bye